Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chambers Academy Sports Live, our initial coaches show with Coach Jason Allen tonight. Uh, Chester, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're kicking off the season, getting 2023 started tonight. Yes, yeah, exciting time here in uh, Lafayette, getting the uh, season underway here, starting off here with here at Monte Alvin. We want to thank them for being our uh, coaches show sponsor, along with uh, Farmers and Merchants Bank in uh, town. Well, we really do appreciate our sponsors, and we have great sponsors. We appreciate everybody jumping on board and covering the show. We thank the Farmers and Merchants team for being involved with us right away and sponsoring tonight's first show. And uh, we are really excited about the venue tonight. We want to thank Roxanne, Roxana and Luis American. We want to thank them for hosting us and giving us this great opportunity to do the show from here. Uh, they're always so generous. So if you would, Please take care of your servers tonight. They work awfully hard, and these are challenging times. we get so many people packed in ordering at one time. So we thank them very much, and we look forward to having a great night. Um, you've got one other sponsor. Yeah, we'd like to also thank um, Chris Strength from uh, 2 and 3 Collective, who worked very hard and very quickly for this incredible setup we got behind us, the banner and the table cover here. They did it you know, in short time and did an incredible job. So thank you very much, Chris. And also Taffney Nelson Photography. She does all of our game posters, and she also did this design behind here. And we also have some paraphernalia up here you can get through David Howard or through the school, and some nice uh, threads here provided um, through uh, 2 and 3 Collective and Chris Strength. But Taffney Nelson did the monograms on this, so much appreciated. And we really do appreciate everybody's support. We have such great fans. And, you know, the Chambers Academy family always comes through and supports us in everything we do. So... We're looking forward to getting started tonight. I'll give you a little bit of a brief breakdown of what we're going to do. We're going to have multiple segments. We've got uh, Coach Allen. He'll be here for our main coaches show portion. We've also got two special guests tonight. We've got Coach Dylan Neesmith here tonight. He's going to be our first coach up to talk. And then we've got Coach Child, uh, Kyle Jackson. He's going to also join us. So we've got uh, a three-coach uh, presentation tonight. So we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. Uh, one of the things that I just want to throw out early, Chester, we have typically done our interviews after the game with our offensive and defensive player of the game. And our plan is to continue that. Yes, it do is. Do our interviews fresh with our players. But this year we've added a little bit of a twist. Yeah, we'll probably leave that for a little bit later in the show. Okay, to, just a little teaser. Is yeah, that what you want to do? a little teaser to do right there. And um, we'd also want to remind everybody to go to the Facebook page and like and follow us on Facebook, and also make sure you're hitting the subscribe button on the Chambers Academy YouTube page so you're notified of all of the events that we uh, go through and do. Um, we had a great spring this year, did a lot of baseball and softball games. We really enjoyed that. But if you go ahead and hit the subscribe right. button, you'll be notified of any athletic event that's coming through Chambers Academy Sports Live. And it really does work. It worked for me. I got the notification of today. Um, just one more thing, one more point of clarity. We're, we're going to have basically four segments tonight. We're going to talk about some stats from last year. We're going to try to break down a little bit about what happened, uh, you know, over the past year, how we're going to replace some production. We're going to talk to all our coaches. And then we're going to close with a couple of other things that uh, we talked about earlier. There'll just be a little bit of a change in the format. So I think now is probably a really good time for us to take our first break. We're going to bring our coaches in. Coach D is going to come up. We're going to get him set up, and we're going to talk a little Chambers Academy football. Yep. We'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, everybody, thank you again for being here tonight. We're back. 
With Coach Dillon, we're going to talk a little uh, Chambers Academy defensive football here. Yes, sir. Fun Coach, side. thank you for being here. We're really happy to spend some time with you. We uh, we tried to annoy you as much as we could during the baseball season, and it just we never got to you, so I don't know what's going on. I know. Chester cornered me in church and asked me if I could be here, and I, you know, I couldn't. Well, good. <laughs> I couldn't sneak slipped, away. Hey, slipped by for four years doing all the post-game <laughs> interviews, so we're going to have to pin you down this year. That's so. right. Yeah, I'll be here. Well, as, as we talked about earlier, one of the things we want to do is we just – we want to try to open the window about like, the program and really the standard that our program has set over the years. Uh, you know, the focus is always on our players, and, and you guys drive that activity with the players. You drive their conditioning. You drive their – they're planning. You really drive them to be the best they can be. And we just have a couple of general questions. We're nothing, you know, we want to get into any strategy that you want to expose here in the early part of the year. But I guess one of my first questions is when when you think about 2023, how do you how do you look at replacing some of the production that you got from last year's players who have graduated? Yeah, we had you know we had some really good players, uh, especially on the back end uh, defensively. Um, you know, replacing Buster and Braxton on the back end, or you know, it's going to be tough task. Um, but excited for the guys. You know, we got a couple new guys in uh, that have been doing really well in, in, in the preseason, and um, so excited to see what they what they're going to be able to do. That's great, and I. I we're always we're always talking about and thinking about the defensive strategy during the game, and I know that adjustments are really key for you guys. And I, I went back and I looked at one of the coaches' shows last year. Coach Allen and I were talking about how when you're on the field, it's a little bit different than being in the coaches' show or being in the stands. You don't have the luxury of time. Our, your adjustments have to be on the fly. Do you guys – do you guys try to condition yourself or practice for that before the season? We do. Um, you know, communication is probably the biggest thing defensively, uh, having the players communicate with each other, you know, based off the adjustments being made, you know, based on formations or, you know, uh, backs in the backfield, um, you know. But having the, having the players communicate, you know, from the, if I'm yelling something from the sideline based off of formation – um, you know, the, that's kind of been our huge focus this year. Last year we kind of lacked that communication, especially coverage-wise, okay. which, which, which really costed us, you know, on big, big explosive plays. One thing that we, we didn't send in the question, and I'm certainly not trying to throw you a ringer here, but, you know, we, as we looked at older films, we saw a lot of offensive sets where the quarterback would have a running back right beside him in right. a stand-up position. I think we saw that at Bessemer and Macon and maybe even a couple other places, maybe Abbeville. What tell us from a defensive coordinator from your defensive setup? What what does that do? What challenge does that present for you? The first thing that we look at defensively uh, when we're breaking down an, uh, an opponent, uh, we, we the first thing we look at is how many backs they have in the backfield. So you know the guy standing right next to anybody that's out that's inside the tackle box, we consider that to be a back. Okay. So um, you know if it's a two back team, you know we'll we'll prepare that way. You know um, based off alignment coverage that everything everything stays the same but now it, when they move the plug outside and it becomes a two by two formation or a three by right. one that changes you know that that's that's more of the personnel change and the position change you know. Do, does that does that line up is it trying to give the quarterback more options is that what the offensive coordinator is trying to do there with that guy right beside him to hand it off for him to run pitch whatever he wants to do yeah, yeah. I mean, when, you know, we consider that if he's right next to the quarterback, we call it sidecar. So, you know, the, like, like on a motorcycle. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we, we use if, if he's sidecar, if the quarterback can run a little bit, then that, that will really change more often, uh, defensively right. what we do. If a guy's not a threat to run, you know, we'll, we'll, put the, we'll usually stack, the fr stack our defensive front away from the running back because normally – if he's if he's on the right side of the quarterback, you know, the play's going. If it's the back, it's gonna you know it's gonna affect that more. So that makes, that makes really perfect sense. Um, you, you know, just as, as I was thinking about other questions, Chester, you have anything you want to you want to get well, in here for? I was, I was just question? you know I was just going to talk to him about how he last year. You know, we we had two big losses early, big you know deflating losses. How did you get the defense to recover? And you know, bring back that you know rebel intensity because those first two games were deflating versus uh, Lee Scott and the uh, team from uh, Macon. Yeah, we were just. I mean, guys, guys were in the right place. 
defensively, um, you know, we weren't panicking because we were outmatched. You know, yeah. we were outgunned and outmatched. And um, so, but our guys were in the right place. Uh, we just weren't making the plays. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I don't want to put too much off on the offense, but the defense was out there the majority yeah, of the time. That's you right. know, and that, and, and that games are like that, you yeah. know. And from a coach, you have to, you know, re reassure those kids they're doing the right thing in the right place and, and continue their confidence level because two losses like that can just take down a season. Yeah. But you guys came back against Edgewood. Had a great game, and then you went on a seven-game winning streak. And yeah. the defense only gave up 212 points last year. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, you took what 70 of those points for the first. Yeah, first two games. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that that that's you know from a, I mean, defensively for the past five years, you know, we've been we've been very stout. Yeah. You know, we had we've had we got a very good system, um, and uh, you know, we've been very stout up, up you know defensively. And I think it goes off to Sid's question earlier about the communication during the game we went out to a couple of practices earlier this year and you know in the heat in the elements already you know you're out there getting in with them pushing them and, and showing them they can get better at what they're doing yeah yeah and it was really great to see that from you and uh, coach allen and kyle was out there yeah and the you know scores can be deceiving um you know when we go back and, and look at film you know we, ha we we we're getting the, we're getting teams to third down and you know and manageable for the defense and we just got we've got to get the get off the field on third yeah, down, yeah. and we put you know that's been another huge emphasis for us is is being able to capitalize and um, get to get off the field when we're on third yeah, down. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so just to, I, we just want to talk about that last year because we were really impressed to come to, after those two big losses. How you guys came back against Edgewood, the intensity was there. Yeah, nothing was lacking, so we were quite impressed with that. And that seven game running streak was very enjoyable by. Everyone here it, in Lafayette. It was, and I mean, it just is a credit to the the, the type of kids that we have. Um, you know, just hard nosed kids that like to go to work, and um, you know, they didn't they didn't you know give up on what we were trying to do, and um, bought into the program and kept on yeah, driving. That's great, it, and it's it, you know, and it's a, it's a really good uh, that's a good that's a good feeling to know that you have that in your back pocket. That's right. Kids that you know will never. You know, never quit on you. That's right. And one one of the things that Chester and I have had noticed earlier when we came out for some practices this year, I think we were there on the first day of hitting, or maybe the second day yeah. of hitting, and we had we had noticed that like the first day things seemed a little slow. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem to be as excited as maybe we were going, and then you guys mm -hmm. put pads on, <laughs> and that day. It, it got it got aggressive and it got really in gear right away. Yeah, the first day of pads is always the milestone everybody looks forward to. Um, you know, especially when you got new kids coming in and you got guys wanting to, you know, prove exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. put their name out there. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm the tough one out here. Yeah, that's that's set right. a little tone. And maybe. then you like the old heads that have been here. They want to make sure that they know <laughs> that's that. right. They want to keep their name on that's, that wall that's right there. Right. So, so that's some good stuff. Um, yeah, that, that, but that first day of pads is always a one that we got circled. You know, we know what we're going to. Well, what you were talking about we, earlier, what is one of the games early in the season you're looking for that defense to step up and shut down? Right. We got we got a pretty tough one right off the bat with yeah. Lee Scott. You know, um, we'll, we'll find out really what we're made of you know, after that Lee Scott game. Um, you know, we got a really solid game plan. For them, um, looking back, what they were doing effectively against us offensively yeah. last year, and, and making tweaks, and um, you know, just just being we we played well defensively against them last year. We just we we just gave up too many explosive plays, right. and we and like I said earlier, we could not get all. We, there were seven third down conversions that we we just couldn't get off the field. And, hey, just a reminder, they were the 3A yeah, state champion. I mean, I, I mean they, yeah. were, they, they beat the brakes off everybody they played last year. I mean, and so you know, they were they were the best team in the state this year. But, you know, they graduate 19 guys. That's we were wondering, yeah. And yep. um, they've lost a few to, you know, Auburn High School. So, I mean, we got, we're we excited. Well, uh, we're, I, I'm assured of one thing. We're, we're going we're gonna to go down there and we're going to compete. No, and, and our kids are going to compete. Oh, no, there's no doubt. And it's, and it's going to rain. <laughs> because it rains on every, <laughs> every Lee Scott game. Every Lee Scott game. And, and, I mean, we, you know, we beat them some guns, you yep, know, yeah. five or six times. I mean, yeah, give them one. We'll get back on track. Well, we'll get back on track I and have, make, make everything right in the world. That's right. <laughs> I have no doubt that we're going to go in there and play them really hard. Um, you know, the, the last thing I will say just as we – I've been looking back at games from last year, and I know Chester has as well. 
One of the things that I always really liked about our defense, our defense had the ability to really bounce back. Like, we would, ha- we would give up a big play. We would get a really tough call, and we would bounce back. Yeah. It, it just gave me the sense that this defense was very resilient. Oh, yeah. I mean, bend but don't break. Right. Right. Bend but don't break. You know, we can, uh, you know, as the, we like to say as the ball gets closer to our end zone, so do, everything tightens up. Yeah. And so, um, you know, as long as we, we just can't give up the explosive plays, right. the big plays over the top, right. the long touchdowns, the, the closer they get, the harder it is to score. Yep. It's just got to limit the explosive plays. Well, we're excited for another great season yeah, of Rebel Football. Absolutely. I know the community is. we got a great crowd up here at Monte Alvin. Absolutely. So um, we're going to be doing this show um, every Thursday. Good so um, make sure your calendar is clear because yeah. I'm going to pin you down again. All right? well, and, and I'll probably continue to ask the same dumb question about <laughs> why is that end stopping there? Because, you know, it's just like I can't get it through my head. But if you can just, you know, bear with me and help me during the year, maybe I can learn something. Yeah, about yeah, we'll be glad to teach you something. We really appreciate your time and, and coming in and being with us tonight. And I think we all learned something. It's, it's just been a, a great experience talking with you. Yes, sir. We're going we're gonna to try to get you guys back. We're going to spend some time with Kyle here in just a couple seconds. Coach, thank you very yes, much. It's always thank a pleasure. You guys. Thank you, man. Yeah, guys, appreciate. we're going to take one more short break here, and then we'll be back. Uh, We again want to mention our sponsors, Farmers and Merchants Bank, for this great evening, their sponsorship. And again, let's thank Luis and Roxana here at Monte Albon 3. We'll be right back after a short break. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone, for our second uh, coaches interview tonight, our third segment. We're here with Coach Kyle Jackson. Coach, I just want to say this. We really appreciate all the hard work you do uh, on the football field with our guys. But also, from another standpoint, I want to thank you for all the hard work you do as the chairman of the board here at Chambers Academy. It's it's really a pleasure working with you in that area as well. Yes, sir. I appreciate Um, that. Well, thank you. Thank you for all the things you do. Um, We want to talk just a little bit about the offensive side of the ball from the line standpoint. And and we had talked about some questions. I, uh, if you'll turn your phone back on since I can't find it. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to get to right away was um, if, if you look at where you are early on in the season, knowing you graduated some guys, what is your overall expectation or your feeling of where the offensive line is right now? Well, you know, each one of the – Teams is different. I mean, even though it's made up of the same guys from the year before, you're still going to have that team has its own, you know, identity and personality type thing. So as as far as this one goes, you know, the first thing I noticed early on in the summer, just in the workouts, was this group. I mean, they come to work as far as it's all business. You know, I mean, the kids they have fun, and that's what we're there for. But it's it's like. It's like their job. That's what that's what they're there to do. And one of those kids actually said, you know, we're here to work so we can have fun later. Right. That, that's a kid quote, you know. So, <clears throat> I mean, you, when you have kids like that, you automatically know, I mean, you're going to have success. 
I, I couldn't agree more with you about that. And it just seems like to me that, that the kids that we ran across and we talked to talked about being at work and going to work. It wasn't the constant, I dread practice, you know, I don't want to do this. It was always about, we're going to go get our stuff done. And it was, it was just an important thing to hear and really a good thing to hear. Um, if, if, we, if we transferred that mindset to the defensive side, any significant differences in the offensive or the defensive side from what you expect? Well, you know, most of those guys are the same guys. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll play, some play both ways. Right. And then we have some that just, you know, play one, of course. But so we returned, you know, offense, we, we, we don't only return in one guy. It's actually at the same spot. Okay. So, you know, we feel like we're young there, but probably not because we do have three seniors and, and like that. But on the defensive side, <clears throat> the two guys in the middle are – they're returning from last year. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of anchor that. Um, Austin Brooks and Ryan Smith, you know, right. those would be your one and your three. Now, the two defensive ends, the um, – those guys are new. Now, that doesn't mean they're new to us. I mean, they played it in JV. Right. They played it all the way up. They, they played a lot last year, you know, got a, got a lot of reps, got a lot of meaningful reps as far as, you know, in ball game. Right. And, and got them early on. Um, you know, Drew Shepard got to play a lot right. at defensive end early on last year. And then you also have um, Eli Wharton there on the other defensive end. And then uh, a kid that just transferred to us this year is going to work in at defensive end. Um, Blake Reeves also will look for Great. good things out of him. Well, the other thing that, that we in our, in our preparation for tonight we're talking about, just jumping back to the offensive side, you know, last year we had really a stable of running back. Uh, we, we talked to Coach a lot about this five-headed monster in the backfield, yeah. but really was could be six or seven. Right. Our, our, or my question more than anything else is, like, when you're, when you're looking at your offensive set, and I know you have your established plays, when, when we pull guards mm -hmm. we, and trap, we seem to be very efficient at that. It seems like we've got really athletic people on the line who can make that move and get, and get on the block and stay on the block. I think that's one of the things that help us gas yards. I mean, we really ground down an awful lot of offensive yards from our backs last year. Does that strategy or that, that mindset of pulling a guard, does it change who, with who's in the backfield, or does that pretty much stay the same with you all the time? No, we're always going to pull somebody, you know, the um – we have, I mean, that's what we do. That's what that's what our kids are brought up doing. You know, it, the the foundation of it is being the wing T. We're always going to get a kick out and a turn up, right. and we're going to do that on just about every play. I mean, there's very rarely where we not get some kind of kick out. Sometimes it may be from a running back. You know, that may come with it, but all those running back guys, I mean, they all know to follow. So, to f just to follow up on that, you were talking earlier about the. The, the character of the kids. You're building these kids up from the Pee Wee and JV session, doing the same over and over and over. They so it's this, repetition. By the time they get thing. to JV, they're doing this in their sleep, right? They, they know. It's muscle memory. I mean, we teach them from the youngest one on Pee Wee to the senior who's done it his whole life. We let them kids will tell you, we lay those hoses out there and we step over those hoses right. and we do it. I mean, the little kids get to watch the big kids. The big kids coach the little kids. I mean, it's, that's what they do. One of the things that we talked about just before we got, we got on the air here tonight, the way we look at the roster, you have eight seniors, seven juniors, and 19 sophomores. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an interesting breakout. You do have some young players in that big sophomore class, and right. a lot of those guys are expected to be impactful. Um, from a standpoint of your, your overall defensive uh, and offensive line play, is, is there any one game on the schedule early – that you see is really pivotal to telling you what those two lines are going to do. Well, I mean, we open up with Lee Scott. You got to beat Lee Scott. I mean, that's just that's what we're here for. <laughs> I like that focus. Coaches are always just like being really focused, like one week away. Yeah. I like that. One week at a time. All right. Well, I, I would certainly would love to see us go down. As we said to Coach Dillon, we, we know we're going to go down there and play well. We know we're going to get after those guys. Uh, it would be certainly nice to bring back a W. Uh, I think our kids are looking forward to going down there and playing hard against those guys. Um, I guess back to the other question that, that Chester was talking about there, we were talking about backs. From what I take from your explanation, you're going to run the offense. The line play is going to be the line play. And whatever back is back there is going to be expected to play in that wing tee as that line play dictates. Right? It's not, it's not the reverse. Right. And, and we won't actually be in – it's not more we in the wing tee. It's just wing tee base. So, I mean, 
that's the type of blocking we're right. going to do. We're going to get that kick out, that turn up, and that, whoever that running back is, he better be holding on that shirt because that's right. where that guy's going. <laughs> right. And occasionally we're going to get outside and we're going to put some long yards on. Yep. And we work on that too every day. <laughs> well, we, we had said something earlier about the hitting. Um, we were out that, that first day in pads, and it was impressive to me. Uh, we saw some guys get after it pretty quick. And uh, the other thing that I think I was – I wasn't surprised by, I was just happy to see was it looked like we were quicker. Uh, I don't know if it was be pure raw speed and a long run, but it looked like we were able to get out on the corner. We were able to get guys breaking passes and making cuts. Would you agree with that? Uh, what, what's your assessment of the overall speed? Yeah, I think this team has a little more team speed than last year. I mean, and we're doing some things that are different to get some guys out there. We, we have those guys, you know, that can do that. So. That's, I'd say you will be quicker this right. year. Well, we look forward to having a, an awfully big year. Uh, we're not going to ask you or Coach Dillon for a prediction. We know you're not in the predicting business because you'd probably say, let's go win next week, and we'll worry about the week after that. So we're not going to get into that. Maybe Chester will give us a prediction later on in the night. Maybe later. Okay. Maybe later. Yeah. Chester, anything else for Coach Jackson? No, we're just uh, looking forward to another great year, and uh, we do appreciate all the hard work you guys put in down there. And uh, it is amazing what you guys can do with those talent down there. We look forward to it. Big Appreciate year. all y'all support and doing this and having everybody out. Well, every, I, I tell people all the time, this stuff is not for me, Chester, and David. It's for the kids back there in the back. It's to elevate this program and make sure that they understand that this Chambers Academy family is going to do everything they can to highlight this program and make it as important, make it as widespread and as well-viewed as it can possibly be across this, uh, this region. So we're excited. We think it's a, a real privilege to work with you guys, and we thank you very much. Yep. Thanks for letting us do that, and thanks to all the guys who came out here in the back. Yes, as a matter uh, of fact, we do have a really great crowd, and I have a lot of players in the back back there. Yep, so we're um, excited about this, but we're going to take a quick break, and we are going to come back with some more of the Farmers and Merchants Coaches Show here at Monte Alvin. All right, folks, and welcome back here to uh, Monte Alvin and the Farmers and Merchants Coaches Show. Kicking it off here to uh, this 2020, 2023 season here with uh, Coach Jason Allen. We've had the privilege of having uh, Coach Dillon and Coach uh, Kyle up here. And now we're going to get to the head coach. And uh, we just want to appreciate – thank you, Coach, for coming up and doing this with us. You know you're busy and uh, got a lot of other things to do, but we do appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Check out this crowd. How about a big round of applause? Absolutely. For this crowd, for you guys, uh, y'all really upped your game this year. We're going to have to up our game to keep up with y'all. This is really nice. Uh, 
How many other schools do this? I don't know very many. I, I, I don't I'll know tell you, it's the thing that we were talking about earlier. You know, it, it really is. It's, it's not about Chambers Academy Sports Live. It's about Chambers Academy Sports, and, and that's what we try to drill down into. And we learned an awful lot this year with softball and baseball, and, yep. and I think we kind of expanded some horizons, and I, I'm hope, hopeful that it'll make us a little bit better with football broadcast maybe this year. Yes, yeah, I, we learn every time we come up here. Yeah. Well, it's just really exciting for our coaching staff and our kids. I would have loved to have played um, with it when – something going on this exciting oh, yeah. you know Absolutely. and we have a coaches show every week and uh, it's a testament to what our kids have accomplished over the years our program has really set a standard that and you guys uh, it just takes a family effort and this is really a first class uh first class effort well, we, guys, we sure know. appreciate that we really do we want to jump into a little bit about last year how we can how you guys went through the year the end of the year eight and four with a you know tough loss to uh, Clark Prep there at the end of the season but those first two games with um, there were non-conference games or non-region games excuse me with um, Lee Scott in the uh, first Presbyterian from Macon and losing Gavin in that second game of the year and how you came back we talked to coach Dillon about it and how you guys elevated the team to come back on that big seven game winning streak was something to you know, behold, it was it was great to watch because we were looking at those two games going, I don't know if they're going to come back, you know, to that level of Rebel football that you have built into the program. Yeah, I was very proud of last year's team. You know, uh, those kids won't, will remember how they responded to adversity, I think. And uh, we lost one of our leaders, and uh, we lost the first two games significantly, and things didn't look good. And uh, – those guys didn't give up, and it says a lot about our coaching staff and a lot about our kids, what kind of kids, what kind of families that we have. Um, and, uh, you know, it, the only loss I think I was probably disappointed with was I felt like we, we were good enough and we had a great chance to go and play for a state championship and um, just could not finish that night against Clark Prep at home. But um, in the overall scheme of things, I thought our kids learned some valuable life lessons, and I was really proud of the way they – they, they responded under adversity. Yeah. One, of, one of the things that I, I looked at today was one of our – it was our coaches show after that second round playoff loss. And, uh, you know, we came in here and, and you came and sat down with us and we just laid our cards on the table. It was a tough loss. It was a game that we felt like we probably could have won and we had some real difficult things go on. And, and what I really appreciated about it was I, I didn't see anybody's head hanging. I know the kids are upset. I know the coaching staff's upset. We were all disappointed we, we lost that game. But it, it just set the tone almost to me that these guys are going to be okay. This coaching staff is going to take this and we're going to try to motivate these guys to get back to this place and overcome that. And one of the things you and I talked about in that coaching show was you can't replay a down. You can't replay a game. It's just like life. You just got to get up and move on to the next thing. Yep. And as coaches, you don't have a whole lot of time <laughs> to do that. You got to get going right away. Absolutely. And I think our kids have been motivated this summer. Um, our seniors have been fantastic. They've shown up every day of workouts. They've worked hard. Uh, they've led our team. They kind of set the pace for um, uh, practice and the energy level. And uh, uh, we don't have a big senior class, but we got a really good senior class. They got some great kids in there, and I think they're going to really do a great job of leading our football team this season. Well, one of the things I've asked both coaches, and, and I'll ask you, and I kind of already know what the answer is going to be here, but we, we talked about games coming up. Like, as you look at our season as it lays out, is is there a big game that you're looking to give you uh, a feel for your football team right away? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the first one's big to me. Um, um, we're playing the defending 3A state champs, right. and uh, we'll find a lot about our team. But, um, you know, these first couple of games are really what we're trying to do is, is see where we're at going into region play. Because the, our main goal is that we want to win the region so we can play at home in the playoffs, and that gives us a great chance, we think, to get to the state championship game. And as we talked last year, we were we really did focus on our region games, and we – we had control really of the region earlier on. And, and the thing that, that Chester mentioned coming off those two opening losses, non-region games, but, but difficult losses, our guys responded, yeah. coaches responded, and we really came out in that third game and played incredibly aggressive. We, we were really kind of a ferocious group through the next six or seven games. We really got after people. And I think that speaks to the character of your team too. They just bounced back right away. 
and they got after it and won the region and got us in a position. Yeah, to that play. was the Edgewood game, and we played really well. Right. Yep. It was either do or die. And right. If we'd have lost that one, we would have been right. would have been hard to turn it around. But uh, our kids played lights out that night Absolutely. and really went on a run. So, uh, you know, just we got great kids at Chambers. You know, you can coaches never get to play it down. <laughs> We can coach those kids, but we don't get to play. They're the ones that affect the game. They really invest in our program. They love it. They care about it. It means a lot to them. They're, they're fantastic kids. They're, and, you know, we can't win without them. So I'm excited for this season. I think we got some really good kids, some great character on our team. Well, we, we saw that early practice, and we saw some of the hitting going on in your first scrimmage. And uh, we, we think these guys are ready to play. And, and I, I, always, I always say when I, when I speak to – our, our kids and especially younger people, you know, you guys have the advantage. You're in the moment now. And, and I hope our kids always hold on to how important this year is. Even for your freshmen, it's one of four years. For your seniors, it's the last year. And like you probably, being a former athlete, there are many times you just wish you could just put the equipment on and play one more game. And these guys are going to understand that. It's going to take them a little time after they finish playing but what's going on right now is really important, and, and their focus and their discipline, I think, is in place. And I think they're ready to have a big year. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm excited to put it on. we got another week of preparation, a uh, week from tonight. And so um, we still got a lot of work, little things to do and clean up, but um, I'm pleased with where we're at. And uh, I'm excited to play next Thursday. I know everybody's excited. This is an exciting time of year. You look all over social media and everybody's talking about how excited they are about football. That's you know? right. So, uh, and you can tell these people in the room are excited about it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place to be here at Chambers Academy. I'm honored to be their football coach. Coach, looking ahead in the schedule there, looking at we've got one home game against the Heritage, a non-region game. But then we hit the road for a, a period of time there and then don't get really back to – home till in end of September. How do you feel about that, having the games? Would you rather have them stacked up away all at once, or would you rather have them staggered? Yeah, um, I'd rather have it staggered a little, but that's just kind of the way the schedule. Last year, we had all of them at home to begin right, with. Right. So, you know, you kind of got to play that out in two-year deals. So if you got a lot of home games early, uh, if one year, you're going to have a lot yeah. of away games early the next year. So uh, we'll just take them one at a time. That's our approach. I'm not even looking at Heritage. Everything we've done has been focusing on Lee Scott and that opening game. And then we'll just take them one by one. You know, it, you, you can't look ahead. You just got you got to play it week by week. And the kids know that. Coaching staff knows that. And uh, so we're excited. We're excited to play next Thursday. Well, great way. We're going to be excited to be down there. And um, – Lee Scott next Thursday. So if you you know in the area, get down there and support the Rebels. If not, we'll have the broadcast here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to that. You get notified when we go live on that. But um, another question here we were talking about earlier is you know you lose some um, depth in the backfield, losing Yurta and Buster. Are you confident that the guys coming up are just going to be able to pick that up with no problem? It was it was amazing last year when Gavin went down. And then the guys just stepped up. It was like they missed no nothing there. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel the same way with the running back uh, folks you got this year? Yeah, well, we'll miss those guys. They were really good players. They were they were good kids, you know. But um, we feel like we got some really good. Uh, we got some good experience out of some sophomores last year, and we got some ninth graders that are going to be sophomores this year that are really good players. Um, and that's one of the uh, perks of coaching your junior programs is you can kind of see what's coming up the line, you know, and you know how those kids are going to handle adversity. You know how they're going to um, respond in tough times. And uh, so um, we're excited about our sophomore class. They're going to really help us in the class that's moving up. Yeah, that's, we looked at earlier at the roster. We were amazed to see how many sophomores are up there on the on that roster already. And, we see, and we've called their name last year as freshmen, making, you know, valuable contributions to the game and the team. So we're excited to see those sophomores hit the field and uh, – make a big impact for the team. Um, one other question was, you know, we relied heavily on the run last year. Very, very few passing options out there. Are we going to see anything, you know, open it up a little bit this year? We're we going to stick to our guns and just be smash mouth football. Yeah, well, you know, that was our goal this summer is try to work on becoming more balanced. Uh, we worked hard on the passing game because I think you got to be balanced. It makes you a lot harder to defend. We're always going to be a, a heavy run team. Mm -hmm. We feel like you've got to win. You've got to run the football to win championships. 
but you need that balance in there of throwing the football and getting guys out of the box because you make it really hard on your guys. So uh, I think we've accomplished some of those things. We've got to do it on the field. We've got to prove it on the field. Until then, you know, we'll see a lot of guys creeping down trying to make it hard on you. So that was our goal in off season, and I think we've made strides. It, just one thing about uh, your personnel. We have some new players that have come into the program this year. Um, can you give us just a little bit of information about the impact you're expecting from some of those new guys? Yeah, well, you know, it's just kind of waiting to see because you don't, you don't know how guys are going to respond if you've never coached them before. But I've been pleased with the guys that have come in, um, their attitude, they've getting along with our other kids, they've molded. That's the first thing, how well sure. are they going to adjust and adapt and fit in with our kids. And uh, I think that's been good. And uh, they'll get better as they go along. It's always a, a – it's an adjustment when you go from one job to the next or one school Absolutely. to the next or one town to the next. It takes some time. So um, I'm excited. We, we did add some, some guys we think that can help us. That's great. Uh, not trying to put either side of the ball on the spot, uh, on the spot but if, if you looked at where your team is at the end of practice today, uh, do you think you're really balanced on offense and defense or do you think one side of the ball is ahead of the other at this point? I think right now we're, we're, we're very excited about where we are defensively. We've got eight starters coming back on defense, and we picked up some guys that we feel like will even make us more complete. We've got some awesome. depth on the defensive side. So we're really excited about that. Offensively, I think we got a chance to be pretty good. we got to protect the football first mm -hmm. and foremost, and we got to cut down on penalties. Those are two things. Or well, the, the second thing is one that hurt us. Now, we didn't turn the ball over very right. much at all last year, but we had a slew of penalties. And we've got to become more disciplined on that side um, and not shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties. I think one of the toughest things for me to do this week is I'm watching games. I watch the Bessemer game. And I think after the seventh holding call, before the end of the third quarter, it was just like that was so out of our normal play. Uh, I think there was a very tightly called game, but that was just so unusual for us. And it was a struggle until our depth took over that game, really late third quarter, early fourth quarter. And we, we just kind of settled it at yeah. the beginning of the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you on the, on the mistakes and just play yeah. better football. But we could, have, we could have finished the game off quicker right. without the penalty yard. Right. If you're aggressive, you're going to get some penalties, but you just got to be smart right. about those penalties and not make the same thing, mistakes over and over right. and over. And, I think, I think we're going to do that this year. I think we got an older, wiser team. Um, some of those kids have grown up, and they understand that it's hard to overcome penalties uh, when you're trying to drive the football on offense. So, now, one rule change you'll see this year is uh, the holding penalty will no longer be penalized from the spot. Of, of the of the foul, it will be penalized from the last the last uh, line of scrimmage. So okay, so that's more like a pro rule then, right? That's a, or college the, rule as or, well. Or college, you yeah. don't get the yardage and back off that you get from the line of scrimmage. Yep. So in, instead of second and twenty six, it can only be second and twenty. Right. Or, okay. Or whatever. Um, I was just trying to think. There's one other question about our offensive flow. Uh, one of the things that, that I, I always look at, when you're, when you're looking at an opponent, do you ever think about early on in the game what, what you want to play first? Do you ever sit down and say, I want to play defense first with these guys or I want to play offense first? Or does it not matter to you at game time? Yeah, um, we kind of talk about that as coaches. But, you know, so much of that is out of your control because you're on a coin flip. Right. You know, so a lot of times you, you'd say, I want to do this, and it ends up being the opposite. Right, you, so, you have no choice. You know, the main thing is we want to get off to a good start. If we're on defense, we'd love to get three and out. Absolutely. And then if, we're, if we get the – I like to take the ball when I can if I feel like we got a chance to score because I think that puts a lot of pressure on the other team when they get the ball and they're down 7-0. Well, we, we, we typically think – uh, of the Chambers Academy offense is four down territory wherever we are. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like the mentality we go into the games looking at. Yeah. Uh, my last question for you, Coach, is just from a from a kicking standpoint. We, we lost Noah Hand. I think he's graduated. Uh, he was a, a, a huge bright spot for us last year. Uh, what what are you expecting from our kicking game? How will that impact the team this year? Yeah. Well, it's important because it's a third of the game, and we've worked on it. Um, Right now, Spencer Newman uh, has been kicking off for us. Um, he's got a really strong leg. Um, if he gets a hold of it and hits it right, he can kick it in the end zone, which is what we're hoping for on kickoffs. Right. Um, extra points, uh, same thing. He's He's been doing pretty well. Uh, we're still kind of 
was kind of looking at places for punter, trying to figure out what we're going to do punting-wise. But we still got uh, another week to work on that, and hopefully we don't punt a whole lot. <laughs> yes. Well, it kind of goes back to my four-down territory. I don't think Coach yeah. Allen likes to punt a lot. Exactly. We don't no, see that much going on. I tell you, I had a coach call me one time. It was after the state championship game in uh, 21, and uh, the next morning and we had faked the punt, uh, T.Y., which sealed the game. And he said, man, I knew y'all were going to fake that punt. He said, I told my defensive coordinator <laughs> earlier in the week, he said, man, this guy really hates to punt. <laughs> well, I, I remember sitting in the stands during that game, my good friend Randy Lindsay, and we're sitting there beside each other just thinking like, oh, boy, here we go. And Randy says to me, he's not going to kick it. I can tell you right now, he's not going to kick it. I hadn't been around the team very much, and I was thinking, yeah, he's, he's going to kick it. No, we didn't come close to kicking that one. And it turned out just right. Yeah. Coach, we, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we're looking forward to having our coaches show weekly. We appreciate our sponsors, especially Farmers and Merchants Bank tonight. We especially appreciate Luis and Roxana for doing the uh, hosting of our show tonight. And uh, we thank our crowd for being here, too. We're going to – we're going to take one more short break. We've got one other small segment that we're going to add in tonight. But thank you again. It's always a pleasure. Thank look forward you. To seeing you. We, we look forward to the year, and we love what you guys are doing for our program, and we look forward to doing this every week, right? right. Every Thursday night. Well, we won't be here next Thursday we'll because be we'll be on the field. Yeah. Right. But yeah. after that, every Thursday night. Yeah. Every Thursday. We'll be right back after one more short break. Thank you, guys. Thanks. All right, folks, welcome back here to Monty Alvin and the um, Farmers and Merchants Coaches Show. Um, it's a great talk conversation with uh, Coach uh, Jason Allen and Coach Kyle, as well as Coach Dillon. It's great to uh, pin the uh, defensive guys down and uh, have them come up here and chat a little bit about um, what they do for the program and where it's going to be going this uh, season. I think people are much more interested in hearing them talk than us probably. Oh, think. absolutely. Maybe yeah, we bore them. Yeah, they know what they're talking about, and we don't. So. <laughs> I think that's obvious. <laughs> yes, but, um, hey, we want to give you guys a little update of what's going to be going on later in the year. As we said, every Thursday night we're going to be having the coaches show, except for next week because we're going to be down in Auburn at the uh, Lee Scott game. But every um, Thursday when we have the coaches show, we're going to announce an impact player of the game. After the games, we always pick an MVP but we felt that there's sometimes we needed to have somebody else brought in. Well, we do, we do our, we try to in the booth have our conversation about the most valuable defensive player and the most valuable offensive player. Sometimes, and once last year, it was the offensive line. Sometimes the, the game works out that way. But the thing that I think we've, we've come to the conclusion of in that moment with that pressure of closing the game out and getting over and doing the interviews, getting the kids out, there is a chance that we have missed a certain impact player. So, we're going to add that award, and it's going to be a conversation we have all the way up till the next Thursday night. And since we've interviewed the offensive and defensive player, 
we're going to try to have that impact player here at our coaches show and sit down with them and spend a few minutes and talk about their impact on the game. Yeah, we'll let them know ahead of time. So if they can be here, you know, we'll bring them in and schedule them in for the um, interview. If they can't be here, we understand, but we just thought we'd like to bring that recognition out there because there's a lot of times when a kid makes an incredible play that changed the momentum of the game that needs to be recognized for that. And and we want to expand as much as we can the recognition that our players have. And, you know, all our players do a great job, and it's like – when you pick the offensive and defensive player, sometimes that gets real iffy. It gets real tough. But we want to just expand it one step further so that we don't miss out on opportunity to recognize a kid who's really done a great job. That's right. So we also want to thank, again, our sponsor for tonight, Farmers and Merchants Bank. Uh, Stanley Tucker and his crew do a great job, and we really appreciate them. We're very happy to have all of you here. It's been a great night. We appreciate your support. All you players in the back, We really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you very much for that, parents and supporters. And we also need to thank, uh, again, Chris Strength at uh, 2 3 Collective for getting this set up here, this great shirts and the um, tablecloth here. And and our Booster Club support. It's amazing here. He did a short time, too, less than probably a week and a half that we were notified. And of course, Taffney Nelson Photography for doing all of our game posters and also designing the new Sports Live logo here for us this year. And we got the best director in all of high school coaches' shows. Exactly. You know that. Yeah, he's a legend from what I hear. Um, but also, hey, remind everybody, make sure you uh, like the Facebook page and also hit that subscribe button on the YouTube right. account so you can um, get uh, notifications of everything that we're putting up here for um, Chambers Academy Athletics. Um, I think that's just about everything for this. We look forward to being here a week, two weeks from tonight. Two weeks, yeah. And we certainly hope we're celebrating a big win over Lee Scott. We know we're going to play them hard. Thank you guys for being here. We appreciate everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Take care.